Welcome to the first in a series of five videos I want to do looking at some basic tips for players who fly combat flight simulators and these are mostly applicable if not only applicable to people who fly warbirds. I was originally going to make one video with five tips in it but the first one that uh, I filmed took up quite some time so I've decided to split them into five separate videos this being the first and the content of this one is instruction on how to conduct evasive and braking turns in what I think is the safest and most effective manner so tip one on my list is to conduct your braking and evasive turns without climbing now quite often when I'm online myself or if I'm watching YouTube videos from other players I see chaps doing defensive turns where they climb so they look behind them and perhaps they see a 109 closing in or another type of enemy aircraft closing in and they go to conduct a braking turn and they get to about there and they start pulling back on the stick and they start climbing like this now by doing so they tend to present um, a sight that looks something like this to the attacking aircraft. It's a fairly large target area and the other downfall of uh, the other downside of doing this kind of braking turn is that the aircraft conducting the evasive maneuver will lose a lot of airspeed very quickly and that's the main drawback. So what I try to do is I try to conduct braking turns in a way that means I won't gain this altitude and therefore lose my airspeed. So what does that look like? So from the first person view, this is just about the braking attitude which I like to have. I'm going to press the play button and we'll go around in the turn. And as you can see, my gun sight pipper should be tracking just above the horizon. I put a little bit of rudder in the same direction as the braking turn a little bit more now and now I've got the horizon at about let's just bring the horizon into view a bit cleaner just keep turning here and away from the sun now we're going to get a decent horizon okay the horizon is about about there so sort of between the pipper and this um the circle you can use this um base of the gun sight circle is a good point to run the horizon along and you can maintain a fairly steep turn I've got lots of back pressure on the stick now and I've probably got wing vortices forming no not yet they will soon if you pull the nose up you'll very quickly lead back on the speed that drop down to it's almost gone but try to keep the nose tracking basically on the horizon you will lose altitude You'll also be able to hold fairly good airspeed. And if I, I can yank back pretty decently on the stick, and we can roll around at 160 miles per hour in a nice tight turn. In such cases from behind, you're less likely to present such a large silhouette for the attacking aircraft. And he's going to have to put his nose down too, which means he's going to go a little bit faster run the risk of not being able to stay inside your turn. So staying level in those braking turns is pretty critical. Let's look at how we can actually practice doing these turns. So you can do your braking turn practice by yourself in single player or you can join a server um, and fly away from the combat zone and just practice alone. I actually spent about two weeks when Cliffs of Dover first came out just learning how to do a braking turn in these aircraft. So what we want to do is break this move down into two parts. The first part is the aileron roll, assisted perhaps with a little bit of rudder, and then the second part is where you put, pull back on the stick and engage the pitch via the elevator. So the aileron roll, we're just going to go full left or full right aileron deflection to about there. It's about 80 degrees. Get back to a, and now I'll do one to the right. To about there. And often what I do is you can line up this 
where my cursor is, this part where the handhold meets the canopy and, and the uh, gun sight, and draw a straight line between those two points and let the horizon track between those two points. It's a good way to judge when you're tipping. So I'm going to tip in on the left now until that thing here hits the horizon. Then we go, boom, that's hit the horizon, and I'm at about the right. I'm at about the right attitude. Now I'm going to add a little rudder this time, so a little left rudder and left aileron. Boom, and we're there. It's a little bit more unstable. You can see when I arrest the turn, it tends to seesaw back and forward a little bit. Um, and you want to practice anticipating. So here we go, three, two, one, pull in, and then I'm arresting it. And, we're, and then once we get to that position, I'm just back on the stick. First, it's about I think I'm moving the stick back about one centimeter, and then two centimeters, three centimeters, four, five, and about 50% deflection now, just over 50% deflection, and that's about all I can pull before it starts wanting to stall on me, blacking out. And I now can maintain this turn position. I've overturned a little bit more from my tip-in. My original tip-in would have been at that attitude, so I've overturned beyond it. But when you're tipping in, there's no need to tip in all the way. And you tip that aileron so just tip to there then start pulling back on the stick gently and then more and then more and then more and then more and as you're pulling back on the stick more and more you can let the nose drop or you can let the aircraft roll a bit further now what i would do i would just practice this for say 10 minutes going each way trimming out between now to the right a little bit of rudder back on the stick, maintain this attitude. And then what you can do, look behind, maintain the turn, come back, correct, look behind, maintain the turn, maintain the turn, look back, correct, put more nose up, Tip behind, look behind, look behind, look in front, hold the turn, level up, now we'll go to the left, just trimming the nose, trimming the uh, rudder, okay left, in, and a little bit back on the stick, checking behind me. A little bit more stick. I'm adding a little bit left rudder now, just to stop the nose from coming up to the right. And checking behind. So I would practice that for 10 minutes a day for a couple of weeks until I'm really confident that I can basically nail it every time. Now there's also a physiological trick you can do when you're doing these braking turns to help you maintain that attitude in the turn. I'm fortunate because I've got the, the joystick I use actually sits between my knees and the top of the joystick comes up to about the bottom of my rib cage. So my hand is physically um, out in front of me at about my rib cage height. If the joystick I'm using was sitting on top of the desk, then it's probably going to be somewhere between chest height and sort of below my chin but I've got my joystick uh, joystick <laughs> joystick I've got my joystick positioned between my legs like you would have in a combat aircraft of this period so it's in this position here so this is very easy for me to do this physiological trick and the trick is to lock your elbow it's the elbow that's holding the stick is to lock that elbow in against the side of your body for me, my elbow is pressed in just at the base of my right rib cage. So I'm right-handed, I have my right hand on the joystick, and then my right elbow is locked in against the base of my right rib cage, just on the outside of my body. So when I go right, all I'm doing, I lock the, I'm locked my elbow in, and I'm just using my wrist and my forearm to roll, and then I'm just using my wrist to pull back on the stick and the rest of my arm is completely still. My shoulder is still, my, uh, my elbow is still, and my upper arm is still. Now I can look around, left, right, and I'm pretty much locked. The only thing that moves is my wrist, just a fraction. So I highly recommend it if you are able to lock your elbow in. If you let your elbow sit loose away from your body, and much more of your arms going to be moving when you do these braking turns and you're much more likely to overcompensate, I'm climbing a little bit there, 
um, and it's just less precise when you lock in. If I was to look behind me now, yeah, I actually rolled out of the turn. That was completely involuntary. So I'm gonna go, and my elbow is out, I look behind me, and there's a natural tendency for the aircraft just to start rolling to the left a fraction. If I lock the elbow in, I can look behind me. In fact, I think it even wants to roll a little bit to the right. Yeah, just a fraction to the right. So I highly recommend that you lock that elbow in. So there we go, there's a few um, sort of ways to explain this tip. The tip being, conduct your braking turns without climbing. And there are a few things to remember. The correct attitude, so maintaining the horizon inside that gun sight area. How to tip in with both aileron and rudder. How to apply the elevator, starting off very gentle and then increasing, increasing, increasing. Because if you apply it suddenly like this, you just fall. And the last tip is to lock your elbow into the side of your body. That'll give you much more precise control and enable you to look back and do other things whilst you're in the braking turn. So there you go. That's my tips for doing the braking turn. Practice, 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 practice offline, practice online. Any chance you get, get good at this braking turn and then get good at doing the braking turn whilst looking behind you. You should better go round and round in circles, looking at the sky behind, check for correction, look behind. Check for correction, look behind. So there we go, tip one. Four more coming in following videos. I hope that will help and I'll see you online hopefully soon.